Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we do yet another PvP commentary, a series in which I take my 1VX clips, I break them down step by step, so it doesn't matter if you're a veteran ESO PvP player or a new player, odds are you'll pick something up from this video. In today's video, we're actually focusing on the Magicka Dragonite, which is probably one of the most underrated PvP classes in ESO. So if you want to get a little bit better, stick around. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys and before we get into today's video a huge shout out to my patrons you guys are absolutely amazing thank you so much for supporting the channel and funding my chopstick addiction trust me guys you can do a lot with chopsticks also guys I'm doing a pvp top 5 if you're curious on how to submit your clips do so at horcruxesoyahoo.com I also have a link down in the description Last thing, 75% of you guys are not currently subscribed to the channel, so please do me a favor, eviscerate the like and subscribe button. Okay guys, so sorry for the elongated intro, sometimes you just have to beg for likes and subscribes as, as a YouTube content creator. That's just the way it is, so every now and then I'll toss one of these in. Now, let me pre preface this by saying, before we get into the PvP video, it's a 1v7, we are running Iron Blood, we are running Burning Spellweave, we are running Malakanth. One Piece Trainee, and then Balorgs. So this is a turn and burn build. If you guys are unfamiliar with that terminology is, essentially the strategy for this build is to get people to jump on you and then, as the name suggests, turn and burn. You want people to be on top of you. You do not want to be the person chasing Nightblades around in stealth. It, this build doesn't work that way. So let's get into it. So this starts out as me and my buddy Pun. We're just kind of capping resources. Right here we get bombed. So that's not good. I did not die surprisingly now i did panic and pop corrosive the reason i pop corrosive because you're pretty much immune and it'll allow me to get off you know whatever uh, abilities and skills that i need to make sure i don't die i popped a detect pop because this is a night blade his only way to get away is cloak and i was not about to let him get away since he already digged down my teammate so we did go in for the bags guys what can i say okay what can i say it was a fell bomb so iron blood prox uh, we still have about five seconds on the iron blood what i'm doing here uh let me go back so right here again i fossilize first you typically want to fossilize and then burning embers but i did not in this order which is not necessarily a bad thing it's just not optimal so you want to fossilize burning embers and then engulfing, but I was able to get both of them off anyway. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, this guy ends up running away. You know, no big deal. We'll just kind of let the uh, clip play out here. I noticed he comes back in on me. I thought he's going to go away and heal. And the very first thing I'm going to do is fossilize. Okay. So we're running wings and this is why we're running wings on the DK. He gets knocked down for whatever reason. A Wicca is a really good night blade. He hits really hard. He's really tanky. So I'm just leaping here to get resources. It wasn't meant to do anything. I literally just leap to get resources. Okay. Okay, so we're just keeping our dots up. Notice our debuff bar. We have a curse on us. I always pay attention to my debuff bar because you don't necessarily know when people are around you sometimes. So I'm constantly looking at my debuff bar as I'm you know doing my rotation. I see a curse that's on me, and I immediately start going super defensive, popping wings, popping rapid regen. You know, and I'm just kind of stalling out time really to figure out wh what I want to do. So I know Wicked is really tanky. He's probably not the best target to go on, but I'm going to try to focus him anyway. And here on my head, I'm like, all right, uh, this isn't going to go well. I, I need to change something. So I get hit with a Meteor right here. I always block Roll Dodge Meteor. Typically a Sork will streak, but when a Meteor is going to hit you, you can best bet that a Frag is going to hit you as well. That's why I pop my wings. I took a chance and roll dodge out of that. Um, a really good sort of streak there. That was an error on my part. So I did that just so I could get closer to this guy. I, he used his ultimate, so I now know that he has no burst. So I can go in on the offensive. So I knew he was going to roll dodge because that's what sorts do. So instead of fossilizing, I roll dodge toward him. I popped engulfing because I knew I was going to land it. It was really easy. He did roll dodge. I should have caught him in the roll dodge with the fossilize. I did not. I opted to go for more dot damage, but it worked out. So right now, it's just me and Wicked going back and forth. Again, I'm using leaps off cooldown because that's how I sustain on this build. I'm pushing all damage, so it's very important for me to get my leaps off when I can due to the combustion passive. So right here is very important. He's a night blade. He, is, he has not hit me with a spectral bow 
in a while. I know the spectral bow is coming. So what I do, I pop wings before I go in for the kill. The other reason that I pop wings is because in the left hand corner of the screen over here, I see a Nightblade snipe spamming me as well. So I pop wings. Luckily, I don't know if Wicca was on the wrong bar, you know, kind of what happened there, but I was able to uh, pr pressure him, get him down. He was the biggest threat, got him out of the way. Another Nightblade comes in. He, he, he's going to stealth up. So right here, I accidentally did not pop the correct potion. I was supposed to pop it a tech potion. I forgot to switch. I thought I was on them. That's an error on my part. Again, guys, this is why Iron Blood is so good. You see it proc on my screen here, 7.7 .7 seconds. I can do whatever I want to this guy. He cannot kill me. So I'm not even buffing. Look, you know how I praise you? You know how I tell you guys the DK is buff, debuff management. Look right here on my buffs and debuffs. I have zero. Why am I doing this? Because I know I can kill this guy without it. I know he's squishy. He did not, I did not see any buffs. So I'm trying to catch him off guard. So the moment I start buffing myself, that's going to signal to him, hey, he's buffing, he's going to go in, you know, while the DK is buffing and healing, there's no point in focusing him because you're not going to be able to kill him. So I left everything down to give him like a false sense of security. I just went in for it anyway, and it paid off. This doesn't always work. Um, he does just kind of, you know, scurry away, but you can kind of look at it as like, okay, Horcrux, if you had your buffs up, you would kill him there. Yeah, but you just have to kind of pick and choose when you think you might be able to go in for the burst. So right here is a very scary position. I, again, like I said, didn't have my buffs up. So now there's two more Nightblade. This is why I went run wings. So I pop a rapid. Right here, they make a really bad mistake. Anytime you can get more than one target in a talent, please do so because each one of those people they have to roll dodge. If they don't roll dodge, you're going to be able to power lash them and get your heals off. So I got really lucky and was able to hit a uh, engulfing there. I'm really bad at aiming my engulfing, so I'm working on that as well. So I engulfing fossilize. So now they have two options. They can eat the dots or they can roll dodge. Well, right here, let me go back. This is DK 101. As soon as you immobilize them, right, everyone's instincts is to dodge roll. I wait for the dodge roll on the night blade. I catch him right in the middle of his dodge roll and there's nothing he can do. My thought I caught him in the middle of dodge roll. So you have to risk it for the biscuit. On the DK, very rarely will you go into a situation to where it's just free kills. You have to risk it. Like right here, I risked it for the biscuit. I roll dodge. I roll dodge because I know everyone who is attacking me is projectile based. I don't think they have anything that can really hit me outside of dots. I have my burning smoke weave up. I have my iron blood up. If you pay attention to the debuff bar. So this roll dodge right here saved me. If I tried to block swap bars and heal, I would have probably died. So first thing I do is pop my big dick heal. Wings. I don't know how this guy got CC. I guess his amenders up top. Thank you so much for your assistance. Again, keep your wings up if there's anyone, you know, projectile base. Wings actually does a lot of damage if you use the uh, Flames of Oblivion morph of it. The sword comes back. He gets caught off guard. So the last that we have here is the uh, other Mag DK. He accidentally popped Inner Light. I think this might be one of those heavy attack builds uh, where you run an Imperial Infiltrator or, you know, something of that nature. But. It's a very fast-paced battle. We got really lucky, and then pretty much everyone in this 1vx was projectile-based, so wings coming in clutch. I do not believe we could have had this 1vx without wings. You know, knows me flapping. You know, the the victory wings there. So. Um, hopefully this is a little bit informative for you guys. If you want to see more content like this, please let me know down in the comments or something I can improve on. Again, guys please eviscerate the like and subscribe button i also have a community discord link is down in the description my patreon members if you're a part of that i also do free coaching anytime i'm in the discord just hey message horcrux i need some tips and tricks on dk this class yada yada i'll spar with you whatever you guys need so anyways thank you guys for watching and i will catch you all in the next one peace